me see. Got some American money. Just dollars. Thousands. Oh, these are Korean dollars. I uh, got some $10 bills in Korean won. Oh, hey Ross World, my money makes money. Do you believe that you need to be really smart or educated in math in order to make money or even to understand money? I don't think so. Now, most of us, I want to say 99% of the population, if you went to the grade of sixth grade, you have some concept of numbers. You don't have to be highly intelligent. You don't have to be a brainiac. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand money. Some of you are not investing. Some of you are not saving. Some of you are not budgeting because you're like, it's quite complicated. I don't understand all these numbers and percentages. Well, let me help you out just a little here. Now, take for instance, if you had 10 $1 bills, how much money do you have? You have $10. Okay, great. If you had 10 $10 bills, how much do you have? You have $100. Now, if you had 10 $100 bills, how much money do you have? You have $1,000. Now, if you had 10 $1,000 bills, you have what? $10,000. And if you had 10 $10,000 bills, how much money would you have? You would have $100,000. And last but not least, if you had 10 $100,000, you'll have $1 million and so on and so forth, all the way up into the trillions if you so be so lucky. So I just broke down simple math that you can apply even if you're not a percentage major or some sort of accountant or CPA or financial guru. Because that's the one thing you do. Break money down to the lowest level where you understand. Don't think in the clouds like, oh, where they're talking about dollar cost averaging. They're talking about, I need to budget this and the percentage of this. No, 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 no. Breaking down, and first and foremost, use the fucking internet. Okay? Use the internet. If you don't understand any of these math things, you Google it, you put it inside the internet, it's going to pop out with an answer. And then you can verify with another website to give you the same answer. But the point I'm making is, you don't need to be highly intelligent to make money. There have been a lot of dumb motherfuckers, excuse my language, who made a lot of money and who has kept a lot of money, who has kept a lot of money and didn't know anything about money. You said, well, when they got rich, they got a financial advisor. No, they knew this. They knew that if I had, I don't know, let's say for instance, this was, I don't know, two $10 bills. Well. They know if they spent this, they won't have 10 left. They're like, well, I want more than this. So how do I get more of this? Whatever he did to get that money, except hit the lottery or inheritance money passed down to the generation, but he actually worked for it. If I can keep doubling and tripling and doing all of this, then guess what? I'm going to be rich because I might not know how much all this is, but at a certain point, you're like, well, I know that this is $10, then so on and so forth. And guess what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, once again, I know we rely on technology for almost everything, but technology is not the devil. Technology is not a bad thing. Technology is a tool for you to be smarter than you actually are, okay? You guys remember those watches with the little calculator on that you like, I mean, I don't get one of them calculator watches when I'm in school, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't trying to learn all that, you know what I'm saying? And people used to cheat. Then people used to have the calculators. People have been cheating with math this whole time. So whether you type it into the computer, you have a, a watch calculator, or you use your phone, there's tools to help you to understand money and percentages. So let me show you a quick way how you can probably do percents in your head. If somebody say, hey, what's 1% of $10? Just flip it and put a period in the middle, 0 0.1. Then they ask you, well, what's 1% of 100? Well, 1% of 100 is one. Well, how do you get that answer? Well, I was always told when it came to 100, and a lot of these things are from memory in school, that one goes into one one time. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Because I have 100, then one goes into 100 100 times. 
we're not talking about how many times things go into each other. We're talking about 1% of $100. 1% of $100 is one. Then they say, okay, smarty pants, what's 1% of a thousand dollars this is easy it's 10 this so on and so forth but the point i'm trying to make is quite simple if you can count to 10 you can count your money if you can count to 10 you can budget your money if you can count to dent if you can count to 10 you can save your money if you can count to 10 you can invest your money just like in stash let's take for instance stash if every portfolio that you open, I have like eight, and you allocate it monthly $10, you can count that. You can count that. Let's say, friends, you open up eight portfolios at $10 a piece. How much is that a month? That's $80. That's $80. That's easy math. That's easy math. So don't tell me you can't invest. Don't tell me you can't invest because you can't, because the minimum for stash is $5. It's five dollars now for Wellfront. It's five hundred dollars. But since you know basic math, you can at least count by tens. Okay, so if you see your paycheck, you see your paycheck, and your paycheck is two thousand dollars, and say, well, that's five hundred dollars. You can do the math because you and you understand the rule of ten. You understand the rule of ten. So since you understand the rule of ten, I will make the rule of ten up because we did the rule of seventy two in another video. But the point I'm trying to make is. Rich people shit, white t-shirt message is that if you can count to 10, you can count. You can count. Now, somebody say, well, that's $500 minus. Well, do the math. Do the math. How many tens are in 100? We went over this. It's 10. I'm off of it. The point I'm trying to make is if you can count by ones or by tens or with your fingers the way we used to, you can invest, you can save, and you can budget, and you can multiply your money. Now, yeah, when things start getting complicated, like compound interest and compound dividends, I, too, use a calculator. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a math teacher, okay? I'm a, number, I'm a numberologist. I'm a numberologist. What does that mean? I just made it up. I don't know. That means that I can take the few numbers that I know and make it work for me, and I understand how much money I have. And guess what? They have all these calculators. They have all these tools online to project a certain amount of money over a course of time at a certain percentage. You do the math. I did the research. This is Ross World. If you can count to 10, you can count some money. I'm out.